Yeah, the connection has been made right here on WCXI 1160 AM, and I always started with TYG 314, and it's happening all around, because I'll tell you what, uh, thing that just happened that first song was by uh it's called going back home now roger daltrey sings that with a guy named wilco johnson he played in a band called dr feel good so i'm announcing it to the crew here and dave drayson just gave ronnie the, the cd just now how weird is that that's a connection has been made stuff the smoking you can't, light you the smoking can't, light is lit you can't you can't <laughs> predict that stuff so who do we have here tonight? We have Horse Cape Trio. Yeah. We got Ron. We got Lou. We got Dave, who's a great photographer. That's our advocate. That yeah. is our advocate. That's right. The super mouth. Yeah. And because I met you guys years ago yeah. at a comic convention. Remember that? There was the. It was the Mo Motor City uh, Comic Con. That's right. And the Sheik. Uh, the, that we were promoting the Sheik movie. Yeah. That's right. That's right. I met you. Guys. And and you, and you're like you got to come on the show and and, and we come now. It's got to be what fourth appearance, maybe? I think fourth so. appearance. And you know what? Your album covers are the greatest, man. In my office, I still have that. When you walk in, well, you, you are say, you are still our counsel. Yes, I'm your lawyer. And so, so we awarded you with uh, uh, artwork from the our last CD, the uh, Hart County album. Yeah. Right, Hart and, County. And the same gentleman that did Hart County did our new release, Dust Off the Jukebox. Box, Mr. Judd Kite out of Kansas City. Oh, he Great. did that. Yes, okay, same was, guy. Well, I was wondering that. Killer he, Kite Productions out the, of Kansas City. The guy's a genius. He, he, and he's a fan. He is. He's, he's a fantastic sure, musician. You might have heard his, of his band, the Rumble Jets, out okay. of Kansas City. Rockabilly band. Out Straight there? up, fantastic. They're not together anymore, but their their library is the great stuff. Gotcha. Great cool. band. Well, you know, well, this is a, like you say, Sheldon. This is an extremely cool cover. I would say it's as good a cover I've, as I've ever seen. In the world of music. Oh, really? Is yeah. cool. But yeah. and check out the Hart County album. Yeah, it's really cool. Do your dad? That's your dad in it. Your dad, he was a rock, kind of a rockabilly cat, and he's in a. Uh, I think was that in Windsor. I yeah, think? yeah. Uh, you know the the story of the Horse Cave Trio's Horse Cave is Horse Cave, Kentucky. Kentucky. And right. my parents and grandparents moved up to Ypsilanti, mm -hmm. Michigan, in 1945. Right. And that picture on the Hart County cover is my dad in a bar in Windsor, 1946. I remember, yeah, that was really cool, man. So we got we got a cool band here, but let me announce who else is here. We got the kid. What's, What's up, up, man? Everyone? We yeah. got the kid. And uh, we got G. Scott Rainey, you heard of. Hello, it's right? nice to be here. It's nice to see you, Sheldon. Yeah, finally I Horse Cave it. Trio. This yeah. is a good night. I'm glad you guys tuned in. And we have uh, the world's most pissed off guy. You ain't pissed off today. You should be. The How were the roads driving here? Not bad. See, I'm the, I'm the world's most pissed off guy. And then we got my man, Michael Ferguson, over here. What's up, man? Yeah, how you doing? Good to see you. Nice to see you. Yeah. One half of the Twin Towers. One half That's of the right. Twin Towers. Do you see how tall he was, man? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, greatest are, lock cl clerks I've ever had. We need to tell the listeners they are twins. Twins. Identical twins. Yeah. And sometimes you can't tell them apart. I can tell them apart. Took me a couple weeks. Or he looked like he was about five foot seventeen. Is that about yeah, right? Yeah, five foot seventeen. Yeah. yeah. There you go. <laughs> and then we got Moto. Moto, I have to give you tell you something. Hello, you, Moto. You Good evening. A, Hello. Wait, Traffic you, actually was very bad. Wait, you see, yeah. hear this guy. He's uh, he's got some uh, shtick. But, yeah. 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 Shtick lock. Gotcha. Yeah, shtick lock. It's a phony <laughs> Russian accent. <laughs> but, but, it's phony. But I have a surprise for him if he comes to my class on Monday. Oh, okay. Uh, we'll talk about that actually. Yeah, we'll, you, we'll go over that later. Yeah, but you're gonna have to be careful and not overextend your stay. No, I'm, I'm very professional when it comes to work, especially yeah, okay. well, we'll presenting see. myself. We'll see what yeah. happens. All right, well, why don't we play some cool tunes right here. The name of the CD is called Dust Off the Jukebox, and this is the title track to it. Why don't we go to it right now? Horse Cape Trio. Yeah, that tune, Wild Weekend, got me started in 1963 at the last dance of the year. The First song, song I learned on guitar. There you go, yeah. And wow. I remember hearing that guitar solo. I thought that was the hardest thing to play. I could not play it that fast. But tell us the background on that tune, Dust Off the Jukebox. Pretty interesting story. Yeah, uh, let's start with the, the concept behind the album. Um, you know, as songwriters, Lou and I, you know, we're in our mid-50s now. And uh, what do you write about at this, at this point in your life? Uh, you, you know, you've already got the girl, you got the car, you're angry about stuff, but nothing anybody wants to hear about. You know, what do you write about? So we started talking, I was like, well, what's the first memory you have of music? 
No, good question. The jukebox. You're right. I remember going to the bar with my dad. Everybody set a stack of quarters. The I go over the jukebox. jukebox. There's Motown. There's there's Elvis. There's the Stones. There's the Beatles. The Guess Who. Mm -hmm. And then like uh, Louis would go with his dad to the beer garden. Did the same the experience. Yeah. Um, I go with my sister to the diner, and they had. The little yeah, flip right jukeboxes at table, yeah. right at your table. Oh, right, the flip at the big yeah. boy. I remember right. the big yeah. boy. So then yeah. suddenly the juice started flowing. Okay, we're going to build, it. we're going to write our own jukebox. We're going to do all these different styles of music, but in our sound. Yes. And so then the second part of that was like, okay, how are you going to execute this? Mm -hmm. Now, in the past, usually we would rehearse all the material, go into the studio, cut it. It's, it's, it's well played, we, we know what we're doing, you hit the button, you record it. That's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to go old school, we wanted to capture the music live, first take if possible, second take, we'll settle for, settle for that, but that's not what we wanted. We wanted the magic, the essence, like Rick said. When you, when you can capture that magic in the studio, the Stones, the Motown, yeah. you know, Sun Records, those guys didn't rehearse those songs. There was a song, it goes like this, turn on the button now. Yeah, get it going. And it and so our producer Tino Gross took him a little while to get hip to that concept because we're kind of we didn't really tell him that from the get go. But that last track, "Dust Off the Jukebox," really is the culmination of of his sound and our sound coming together. And uh, and, and we're so excited for this record. I, and we're so excited to be here on the Rock Thank and Roll you, Lawyer Show oh, great to, to kick you. it off. Thank you, man. Just we, like we did with Hart County. That's right. We did that. <laughs> yeah. And uh, that was great, man. That was a cool too, man. I well, like how it built up. Thank you. You know, and then when the harmonies came in, you know, I always dig harmonies. I mean, you in slide guitar. In slide. Yeah. yeah. Can't be but, that. Originally, it wasn't. Originally. Really? Oh, was it? No. Originally, Ron and I were, were up north hanging out, and we were, like, writing a little bit, you know, and we had, we had that song as like a honky tonk bar kind Real of kind of slow. Oh, but okay. we went into the studio and we were like, you remember how that goes? And I'm like, no, not really. <laughs> what do you? And he goes, well, I <laughs> thought it was in, you know. I had the lyrics and, and I had the, you know, we, yeah. we had the two. We and, had the idea and then, and I said, well, what about if we do it in like open G and do it in a slide format? Oh, you know? it, wasn't it's like, in, it wasn't no, it, it. No, so that was the magic, right? You know, yeah. we just, well, you know, there's a tune later on we're gonna play a slide to one of my favorites of the of of the CD. It, it's called. Let me get it. But I don't want to play it yet. Okay. It's called. Where is it here? Da, 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 da. Where is it? I did put it on there. It's something about life. Oh, it's lifetime. Just, yeah. Great song. Well, I, 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 I had that on there. All right, we'll get it. Don't worry about it. But I want to play some more of your stuff. Now, right. Sugar Coated Love. You know that too. Oh yeah, Lazy Lester. Yeah. You know about Louisiana uh, Lester, don't you? Yeah, great Louisiana blues man, swamp blues. Mm -hmm. He lives in Pontiac. Oh, okay. He's amazing. Awesome. So tell us how that came to be. Um, we're good friends. Our, our mentor out of Texas is uh, Hewland Duvall, is one of the original Rockabilly Cats. Oh, yes. And, and he did a version of this that, that, he, okay. that he turned me on to. And so um, it had been in my mind, it had been in my mind, and it was one of the first things we laid down. And then later on, when we were, were thinking about how to add to the track, we brought in the legend Jim McCarty to play lead guitar uh, yes. on this yes. track. And uh, I think it turned out pretty nice. Let's, let's hear Sugar Coated Love. Yeah. Next Friday night, you're at the Token Lounge. Yes, Next Friday, uh, September 22nd, we are releasing the jukebox. We're so excited. Uh, I'm telling you, we've got uh, Tino G and the Dumpster Machine opening up. That's Tino's new group. Oh, okay. And um, it's only ten bucks to get in, ten bucks to buy a seat. Worth ten, it. Ten dollar no holla. Bring your mama. There, yeah. Yeah. there you go. There's I'm gonna James. stop at the ATM. Make sure I have ten bucks. At least. Well, yeah. well, you've already got a CD. Yeah, yeah it's true. There you go. I want to see. You want to see, uh, you wanna see the live show? Yeah, I want to see it hit the stage. God, I want to yeah. go that night. It's my holiday. How could I get out of it? Well, I don't know. Pretend well, you're a Presbyterian that Yes, night. yes, <laughs> yes. I, I could try that. There we go. What's that noise? People are calling oh, in. Oh, jeez. They're going crazy. Now. I like how people, they call while we're on That's the air. Okay. You know. Let's hear her music drives her nuts. Yeah. Probably her kids. Her kid, one of her kids is so cute. She, <coughs> she's, uh, how old is your kid that has the same birthday as me? Oh, hold on one second. Um, <laughs> she's six. Cute. I walk in, yeah, it's tomorrow. my birthday, and it's her birthday. Perfect. I'll call yeah. you when I get out of work. 
She'll call you when. I'll call you when I get out of work. Yeah, she'll do that. that. What's up, kid? The kid really gets a damn education from this show, don't you, man? Yes, sir. How cool is this guy? 16 years old, getting all this stuff. He's got some sunglasses. What are they? Ray Ban. Ray Ban -Ban glasses. Yep. Looking good. Really cool. pairs. Well, you know, uh, one of my favorite guitar players, besides you, Louie, is. uh, and I want your guitar that you have a cool black guitar. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the black Telecaster yeah, the Thunder so, Aerodyne. Yeah. So cool, man. And one of my favorites uh, is uh, uh, Danny Gann. Oh, the best. And he recorded with oh. Robert Gordon, and he, he does a cool version of Good Rockin' Tonight. Check out his, his breaks during the Yeah. Show. Let's hear some uh, Danny Gann. <coughs> Wow, that's real. Yeah, real relevant and original. That is the truth with all our crew here, Horse Cave Trio with oh, Louie we'll, and we'll my time. man Ronnie and with uh, Dave Kicking Grayson here, here, who's going to be on our show in two weeks, and we'll talk about that a little later, too. Nice. And great stuff here. Oh, Bethy, what are we doing? We're crossing it out. Thank you, because I got a little ahead, ahead of You're myself. You're getting excited. I am excited. It's cause excited. I, we're excited. excited. Yeah. Right here, this song, Man Who Built Your Hot Rod. Oh, I'd love to tell you tell about us, this track. I want to know the title. Yeah. Um, so uh, I can't talk enough about our producer Tino Gross um, and the the work that he put uh, put in on this mm-hmm. record. He actually wrote this song for the record for us. I was his lawyer for mine. a little bit when he was with the Urbations. Nice, yeah, uh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and Tino plays drums on this track, and uh, and and uh, also features. Uh, Detroit punk legend Karen Neal, the Queen Bee. That's right. Yeah. On backup She's vocals. She's got knows her. And uh, mm-hmm. so, I mean, this is uh, dirty rockabilly car full on fun rock and roll. Now, who were you building the car for? Well, you I didn't were... write the song. Oh, you did it? No, it's Tino's. He wrote that oh, for he us. Wrote really? that. Oh, yeah. wow. Boy, I could tell I was listening to what you were talking about. I think about. you were thinking about the story you were saying during the break. Yeah, my prostate <laughs> operation. I, I should tell that. I'll tell that during Go ahead, tell break. it. Oh, you want me to tell it? All yeah, right. I want to hear the All story right, so, on the air. So I had my prostate surgery, right? You know, not cancer, you know, thank God of that, you know. And, uh, and so what? So I get out and I'm stoned because they give you that Michael Jackson drug, you know. And I'm out of it. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus. Well, look at this clown over here. Just <laughs> shut up. Oh, no, I'm telling the full story. Okay. So when it, so Guilty what, until proven yeah, innocent. So, so what happens? So we all go to lunch. I'm there. My dad's there. G. Scott's there. Uh, my old guitar teacher there, Mark Levine. And then Moto shows up. So Moto says, why don't we go to a gentleman's club? And I'm thinking, you know, that's a good idea. You know, they have, I don't know, maybe, I sh- you know. Because I wanted to see if my mojo was working. You know, <laughs> I wanted to see if you remembered any of them. Yeah, right. And you know what? The reflex was still there. There you go. <laughs> yeah. So women, it still works out there. Okay. I could really go into it even more, but I'm not going to do that. But we had a great time that day, and and uh, Mr. Moto paid for everything. Wow. So, wow. so I want to thank you. He was you. quite the gentleman. He was good. It, it, the thing is, I was sitting there. You guys were off somewhere. You know, all I did that day was catch Legionnaire's disease. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you did get sick that day. Yes. Time. <laughs> I still have that cough. Yeah, you did. <laughs> wow. And, and so I was starting to come down, you know, and I wanted to get there before I came down. But he had to go home and get, get shoes. He was wearing flip-flops. That's right. I remember that. That was That's fun. Right. We had the gentleman's club. said you can't wear flip-flops. They wouldn't let him in. They wouldn't let him in. Oh, I wouldn't this let him in either. a fancy, <laughs> high-priced... But we had fun, and thank you, Mr. Moto, for suggesting that. You know, he's a little quiet right now, but that's okay. Okay, but we have him on drugs. Yeah, we'll have him on drugs. So let's play that song, "Man Who Built Your Hot Ride." Let's Ooh, do it. Let's do it, man. Oh, he's a crazy quasar. But we just heard the two Pulsar. man who built who? Pulsar Katish. Pulsar. I always get it wrong. He he worked on the other side of the station. You know, it's the international side, and yeah. that's how we met the. Football. We should bring him on again. So I brought him to the office and he recorded it. He nice. needs some more legal counsel. Yeah, really, really. So uh, that was a call. Call us our quasar. Quilzar Katish. Gotcha. All right. He's from Uzbekistan. Yeah, right. Yeah, quasar. Yeah. yeah. He married a stripper or something. We, we'll have he to did. Play that bit. That's how we got his green card. Well, so what? <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. You know what we do sometimes? We go into the studio. Now, let me tell you, you ever hear the song Rock and Roll Ruby? Oh, yeah. By Warren Smith? Yeah, yeah. Well, I found the demo to that, 
and let's see if you could guess who's singing the demo. So let's play the demo going into the studio, and then we're going to hear Warren Smith have the, the Sun Record hit. So oh, let's, great let's song. go to that. Okay, this is uh, Sheldon K, the rock and roll lawyer, right here on WCXI 1160 AM with our special guest, Horse Cave Trio with uh, Ronnie and, and uh, not Scotty. Ronnie, <laughs> Ronnie, Ronnie and Scotty. Yeah, Ronnie yeah. and Scotty's going to do it. Bill Black, yeah. And then uh, we got Dave Drayson here. This is, I'm having a fun show today. It's always a blast when we, we're here. We love being here with you guys. It's so much fun, ain't it? We don't always have a premiere like this, though. This uh, is. The, the Jukebox album is... Out of sight. Dust off the Thank you. Oh, Thank dust you. off yeah, the yeah, yeah. We play that tune tonight, but we're there's just so many good songs on this, and this one is one of my favorites right here. And uh, why don't we talk about that? It's called Lifetime. Yeah, it kind of started out almost um, uh, kind of like an oasis, uh, Tom Petty, like a like a arena rock tune, and then. Uh, then we started working on it, and it, it got a life of its own. Uh, Louis added the slide, and and uh, and that's uh, this one's Tino on the drums on this one. Oh, okay. uh, he came up with the idea for the break, uh, and uh, yeah, it's it's get out your lighters and and uh, <laughs> yeah, you exactly. know and uh, let's rock. This really is a great great song. Let's play it for Thanks, the guys. <laughs> Breakout CD right here, Dust Off the Jukebox, with my friends here, Horse Cave Trio. And they're playing next week at the Token Lounge. It opens up at 7, and it's open to all people. Yeah. And you've got such great tunes that you're going to perform that night. That's actually the CD release party. That's yeah, right. Yeah, the CD comes Friday out next night. Friday. And the debut is on our show. That's yes, an honor, is. man. The premiere. That, yes, that, yes. That, that, we that, did it with the last CD, and, and we're doing it with this one. And, tradition. Uh, and uh, keep doing it, man. And uh, you know, we we stick with our friends. Yeah, that's right. You, you're that's it. You know, I'll tell you one thing. On my tombstone, it's going to say what he was loyal I, to I, his friends. I looked out for my people. Well, yeah, <laughs> right. I take care of my people. Yeah, take care. You yeah. do. Yeah. I always say that. Yeah. Right. I used to say that in the always. office. Always. Well, I always get it a little wrong. You know. Well, that. you got it. You got the idea. I have to say, I don't like to think about something like tombstones. That's kind of negative conversation. That's like negative tone. I don't go back to the like corner. That. Get out of here. <laughs> I'm just yeah. being honest. Why, you, I, uh, you, gotta, you gotta be philosophical about but it. But it's just philosophical. I know. But I know. you know, I'm like that, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's still kind of depressing to me. I gotta be honest. Well, the, the coming out of the tune lifetime, that's kind of what it's all about. It's yeah. is, is yeah. looking back at your life and mm -hmm. and uh, you know you think about the good times and you talk about the bad times and and you talk about the, the bad times and think about the good times and yeah. you know, reflecting on this life. Happens. That's and, what happens. And, yeah. and and and. Uh, no, I had some rough spots a couple weeks ago, and I was with uh, Moto, and I man, I tell you, I was ready, and then all of a sudden things. The light opened up. I told you, you come out better than you go in. That's yeah, what happens yeah. usually. You gotta That's look on the bright side. He's That's right. what she said. <laughs> <laughs> Good old Doug. Ah. That's funny. Speaking of Dave, Dave's gonna be on because he's got a, a wrestling live show coming up at Cobo Hall, man. Oh, talk, this is so exciting. Talk to us yeah. a little bit about that. Well, this will be the first time uh, wrestling will be at Cobo in 37 years mm -hmm. since the Sheik's big time wrestling uh, folded in 19, 1980. Mm -hmm. uh, WWE shows were there, but they were just really nothing. Uh, this, we're doing a fan fest convention first uh, from 12 to 6, and it, all the guys will be there, um, and others that you know we haven't even mentioned yet mm -hmm. and I don't want to mention it yet on the show but I will in two weeks sure uh, but everybody will be there for autographs uh, photo taking stories you know uh, I may do a history of Kobo arena wrestling which really Kobo opened in 1961 and the first one of the very first uh, shows there was big time wrestling Oh, okay. Uh, so, and then at night, uh, after the fan fest and convention, we've got a whole lineup of sh uh, wrestling, you know, uh, bringing back the old days. And we've got guys like Shane Douglas from ECW going against Al Snow. We've got midgets coming in. We've got <laughs> girls coming in. Uh, you know, we'll be there. the Monroes will be there. There's just an array of talent, and it's going to be uh, old school. 
You know, it's not yeah. going to be, you know, a bunch of talking and skits right. and crap like you see on TV. Exactly. There's going to be nothing but pure wrestling, pure excitement, mm -hmm. pure fun for the whole family. Well, you, you would, promise it's not going to be a, like a snuff movie. Let me tell you something here. No. You're going to like this, Mona. I'm a huge wrestling fan, I have to say. I currently subscribe to the WWE <laughs> Network, and I love all the current stuff. I, I was at WrestleMania 23 10 years ago, to be exactly, and when Vince McMahon and um, Donald character. Trump came, and I was there at Ford Field. So I watch uh, Monday Night Raw and SmackDown every week, and every, every pay-per-view, so I'm a huge fan. I this is a really I have a, topic right I have, here. I, have, I, I have a story to tell you, a couple <laughs> stories here. I love wrestling. Dave is very famous because I used to watch him on TV when I was a kid. He was on Channel 9. He's famous, you know why? Because he was the Sheik's manager. Are you talking about the Iron Sheik? Oh, himself? get out of here. Go in the hallway, yeah, jabroni. Yeah, you take a time out with that, you jabroni. <laughs> <laughs> Iron Sheik, Iron get out of here. It's fat. Well, Things are getting heated yeah. up in here. Wait a minute, wait a minute. He didn't talking. expect that. That's his persona I, on, yeah. on the I, television. Have you ever met Paul Heyman before? I knew Paul Heyman when he was a kid. We were both kids taking photographs. He was in New York and Philadelphia, me here in Detroit, and we used to correspond and uh, do letters back with snail mail before email and all this other stuff came I'm, out. I'm a huge fan of Paul Heyman. He's amazing on the microphone until this very day. You know, He yeah. represents Brock Lesnar and all this stuff, so this is awesome. Well, he's one of the only true yeah. wrestling managers out there right now, yeah, you know, because serious. Vince McMahon really killed off wrestling managers a long time ago. And he started bringing in valets, valets you know, so, well, you know. I think, I think the business is definitely not what it was before, but I think it's still good, and I, I still enjoy it very much, still every day. But tune in two weeks from now, two weeks from today. We're going to have a show on wrestling and, you know, promoting that. Yeah, yeah, but let's cool. get back to Horse Cave Trio. That's you why we're it. here. You yeah, can. that's what I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, what the hell? All right, well, so. Well, I have to jump in there real quick and say that I bought my VIP tickets to the Cobo event back in June. And my son and I will be attending both the convention and the wrestling match at nighttime. It'll be and, fun. And uh, we got ourselves a room down at the Rensen. That's how uh, we're we're gonna just milk this. Uh, we're down for this uh, return. The road to Kobo, back to Kobo Hall, wrestling back. At, at Where the, it should so, be. Yes. Yes. That's right, man. Oh, return that, of wrestling. That will be fun. And that's going to be, you're coming on two weeks from tonight, and we'll have a really fun show, and I'll save my, my story for that night. But let's go back to the Horse Cave Trio. Let's. Uh, let's do, you know, I want to play, uh, let's see, let's play, tell us about Forever Forever. I'll let Louie. All right, Louie. Um, so Forever Forever, a real close friend of ours, um, Lotto, um, died in a motorcycle accident, and... Prior to that, he kept on telling me and Ron every time he'd see us. He, he'd come everywhere to see us play. Yeah. And he'd say, "Man, I, you know, I, I don't understand. You guys should be. You guys should be famous. You should be on tour. You should be huge. You know, you should be this." And then, right before he he passed, he came up to me and Ron and he said, "You know what?" He goes, "I'm kind of glad that you're not famous, and I'm, and I'm glad that you're not really big." He goes, "Cause that way I can see you anytime I want, and and I can come right up and talk to you, and, wow, and you know, and things are the same." And um, it wasn't long after that that, you know, that this tragedy happened. And um, he was a club. You know, he rode in, rode in a club. And, and all clubs have that, that moniker in the middle of their names that say forever, forever. So whatever the club name is, it's, you know. And I kept thinking about that. And I presented it to Ron. And I just had, you know, a couple chords. And he came up with the lyrics and... And we did this song called Forever, it's Forever, about, and, and, and he it's and, it. well, yeah, yeah and, and it's all it's all about Lotto, and it's and it's about everything. It's about forever, forever, your life, your love. You know, we live hard, we party hard, we love hard, fight hard, and that's what Forever, Forever is about. All right, well, let's do it right now. This is AM 1160 WCFF. There you go, WCXI, right here. I'll do the top of the hour, too. You do the top of the hour. Let's hear uh, it. Well, Quilzar was going to do it. No, no, we don't want him to do it. Well, maybe no, next week? Maybe next, next week, week? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we don't want him to do it. Well, you know what I want to do here? Let's play I, I got a tune on my list. I don't know if you'll like it, but let's try it. You ever hear, a, I'll tell you a story about this band. Uh, there's a band called World Party. You oh, ever yeah. hear them? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Really good band. They did a cool song called Mes Meshes, Message in the Bottle. So I'm on the I'm on uh, YouTube and I heard the tune and I downloaded it and I was gonna play the song that Friday and it was on a Wednesday night. The next day, you're not gonna believe who showed up at Guitar Center. 
met the World Party. They were on a tour and they needed Carl cards. Carl Wallinger? And I, what? Carl Wallinger showed up? I, I have no idea who it was. That's but him. It, yeah. it was the guys from the band. I told them the story. I said, man, I, I, I'm going to play your tune on Friday. And it was like one of those coincidences again. Yeah. The connection has been made. I have that all the time happen. And that's good. Yeah. And I, I that means you're doing the right thing. It means I'm doing the right thing. So let's do World Party Message in a Bottle. Yeah, it ends on a six chord, I think. Well, it sounds like You have it. perfect pitch. No, believe me, I don't. I wish I... I had one client who had perfect pitch. A band comes in, and one guy in the band says, the guitar player has perfect... And he was real humble and embarrassed. He really got embarrassed. I said, I don't believe it. So I had a guitar there, I tuned it up, and you could actually tune a guitar uh, with the phone because it's an F note, and then you just tune it and lower it, and then it's, it's an E. So, And so uh, I did it, and the guy got the sharps and the flats, I could not believe it, you know. So I don't have, per I, I just try to, I have relative pitch. Relative. Which is different. So I've got some relatives too that I just <laughs> that you want to pitch. Yeah, yeah. you want to pitch about that. But let, <laughs> let's continue. Then I'm done. Let's continue with uh, a tune. Fix a love. Talk to us about. Oh that. yeah, this this is a great story here. Um, during the process of making the record, Tino, our producer, kept coming to us and saying, "Johnny B, uh, the legendary Detroit drummer." Mm -hmm. That's right. Um, he's he's got this song. He wants you guys to do this song. It's perfect oh, for the record. Cool. Tune. Perfect for the record. And he gave us the demo, and we're listening to it. And we're like, it was almost kind of like a, like a Nuggets, like a, a Herman Hermits, kind of like a, a kind of a, a British invasion. Yeah, right. And and we're listening to it and listening to it. And Louis's like, I just don't see how we can make this happen at all, whatsoever. And so I went down to the studio, and Johnny had actually cut the drums and acoustic guitar himself, and. Uh, I spent all day in the studio laying down the bass and laying down the vocals, and then I gave it to Lou and I said, now check it out. And he waited until the last minute and knocked it out in the studio. So you just play, get up there and play. Well, I, I, I waited, you know, like Tino says, he goes, you know, we gotta, you gotta finish this track, you know? And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like, he goes, well, we got, you know, so we're gonna do a session on Thursday. And I'm like, all right. So on Wednesday, my wife is, you know, talking to me. And she's like, don't, don't you have a thing that you need to be working on, you know? <laughs> no, shouldn't like, you be yeah, doing shouldn't something? You, shouldn't, yeah. you, shouldn't you be working on this? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Nine o'clock at night, I finally, I went down. I went downstairs and I grabbed my guitar and I put the demo in and I started playing to it. And, and I basically, I came up with like three different guitar parts and thinking like one of them might work and what... You'll hear the song it's and all of them. Reminded are in me there. of the sixties too, man. Yeah, right. really yeah, cool. No. They used a little Fender Princeton amp. Oh, okay. Tell us up. about that. Sure. Hey, let's do Fix of Love, uh, Horse Cave Trio. Here we go. I am back online right here on WCXI eleven sixty AM, the Rock and Roll Lawyer Show with your host. G. Scott Rainey and me, Shelby uh, Yeah. And uh, yeah. Dave has appointed a host. Self appointed host. Self -appointed. Yeah, That's right. Dave has an interesting story. Tell it. Uh, just in the studio right now, there's two out of the three bands that when I was in Cuba two years ago, I took CDs with me, uh, hoping to get them on public radio or however I can get them on. But there's the big famous hotel there that this one gal took me to, and she says they have a jukebox, you know, in their large bar. Sure. So I got to talking to the manager, and I told him, you know, the CDs that I have, and he goes, Americana music? And I go, yeah, it's like, so the very, you know, I presented the, you know, uh, CDs to him, and it was Howling Diablos, Horse Cave Trio, and the third one he looked at was, um, Frigid, Pink. Frigid Pink. And he got so excited, he said, La Casa de la Arriba Sol. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. figuring it out. Yeah, House of the Rising Sun. Oh, that's right. Uh, that's right. right. He knew I that. He was cussing at us. He, <laughs> no. So he right then that. and there, he opened up the jukebox, and those are the first three American music uh, that have ever been in that jukebox in the hotel. Wow. Cool. Very cool, man. And, uh, you know, uh, we can go out here. So uh, this is a, I don't know if a lot of the audience know, this is Bust Out. 
and I heard this years ago, 19, 1962 tune, and I, yeah, but the professor had an idea of how we should close the show. Tell it. Yeah, uh, we have so much talent in this room right now, and all of us, for the most part, are fortunate enough to have paying gigs coming up in the near future, so uh, everybody's going to get a chance to plug theirs, uh, so I'm going to start because I have the microphone right now. That was your idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anyway, tomorrow night at um, the Cadu Cafe, which is in Detroit, or just north of the Gross Point border, um, I'm going to be there with uh, a Funk Brothers tribute band Ooh. and uh, nice. a, a vocalist from the west side of the state named Sam Reed, who you can check him out online. Great uh, blue-eyed soul. That's tomorrow night at the Cadu Cafe. Doors open at 4 in the afternoon. Show doesn't start, though, until 10. Take in some feather bowl, bowling, some food, all good. Nice. All right, this is Rock and Ron, the Ipsy Tucky Outlaw from the band Horse Cave Trio. Trio. Yeah. Next Friday, September 22nd, live at the Token Lounge in beautiful Westland, Michigan. It's the release party for Dust Off the Jukebox. The second release for the Horse Cave Trio on the award-winning Funky D record label and Tino G's Dumpster Machine will be opening up the show. Be there, don't be square, doors at 7, music at 8.30. I'm telling you, it's the place to be. Ten butts. Ten dollar no holla, bring your mama. Oh, you could talk. Yeah, I'm just a drummer, I don't know anything. <laughs> no, October 7th, we're going to be at uh, Club 54. Uh, that's out in Sterling Heights. It's going to be a fun night, so everybody come down and enjoy. Okay, and then and on, who's playing? And then on oh, Fridge well, Pink. Yeah. Then on the twenty uh, uh, October what now? That's the same night. If, same if night, you're not at Fridge Pink. October seventh. October seventh at Cobo Arena. Big time wrestling. XICW returns for the first time in 37 years. And don't forget to tune in two weeks from tonight. Rock and Roll Lawyer Show. Me, Dave Drayson, will be promoting that wrestling show. Okay. See you next week on the Rock and Roll Lawyer Show. <laughs>